Jackie, play that intro. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Friday Nooner. We're back from summer hiatus. It is Friday, September 16th. Uh, Yeah, you can contain your enthusiasm, uh, Joe. But uh, we've got an exciting show for you uh, today. We're bringing back, uh, oh, by the way, I haven't said who I am. I'm Pete McIntyre. I'm the managing editor of Crep Beat with me. As always, is the Godfather himself, Joe Colby. How are you, Joe? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Okay. Yeah. Except for yeah. one problem. Oh. Is I right. normally am on. Let me switch our side. Oh, the other side. There we go. Yeah. I'm usually on the right hand side of the screen. You're on the left, and okay. We're a little Should that rusty. be important to you? Okay, then then switch that. Uh, we'll we will shortly bring out our co-host uh, Chantal. And uh, actually, she well, she'll tell us about. She may or may not tell us about her some of her future plans. No, she's not. She's uh, in the back telling me she's not going to tell us anything about. Uh, but she may or may not be joining us uh, every week. We'll, we, maybe we'll, we'll hear about that. Maybe we won't. And uh, a little later, in about fifteen minutes or so, we'll bring out our guest, who is Ryan Bethencourt, who uh, moved here from the Bay Area. I think it was in Oakland to the Triangle one of those pandemic transplants and uh, he wears a lot of hats, but uh, some of his largest is he's the CEO of Wild Earth, which makes sustainable plant-based pet food, uh, made a deal on Shark Tank, uh, I believe. And he also invests as a big investor. He has started sustainable food ventures here in the triangle um, and they invest in kind of non-animal food uh so plant-based cell-based uh you know he's a scientist by training a lot of biotech uh, and has really uh done a lot of things in the triangle in a short time here so we look forward to that but why don't we bring out chantal let's do it i guess hey she can guys. bring herself out but hey how are you hey good good to no see scene. you i know it's it's been a while how how, you how was your summer yeah how did you spend your summer vacation from it was anyway. busy. I, um, you know, we had a, a family trip to the UK and we all got COVID and it was a yeah. bit, you know, but it's a common story. I think the airports are cesspools at the moment. So, um, you know, I, and I had another, we had, we went to Vermont, we went to camp, to alumni camp, but Gwyneth Paltrow was not there. Oh, okay. I was going to, I was going to ask naturally. Okay. <laughs> But she is an alum, alumna of your camp, right? But she just wasn't there. Yeah, she wasn't there this time around. Anyone else? Any other names we'd know? Uh, no, no, no. Stephanie Zimbalis from a long time ago. She was oh, in wow. Steel. Do you yeah, that? sure. Yeah, I, lo- I loved her on that. Yeah. Th- was yeah. her dad Ephraim Zimbalis? Was he ever around? No, no. Okay. But her cousin Christy Zimbalis was, and um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not going to get into the camp who's who, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, there's some names there. Okay, That's cool. Well, hey, so just as a reminder, uh, the Friday Nooner is kind of a live show, so yes. already Grep, Grep Beat has posted a comment. Happy Friday to encourage people to always comment and react along. So if you have a comment and you want to say something to one of us or just throw out something random. We, we would love to hear it. Yes, we will react. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be random. You know, if it's on point, yeah, that's even on better. But good. I guess, uh, you know, I guess pretty much anything, anything goes. Um, all right, so there, there's a lot going on. Oh, here's that Mike Shannon saying the Friday Nooner is back. That's true, isn't? Is he one of your college friends, Joe? Uh, I believe he's with Bank of America. No, he's not oh. one of my college friends. I mean, we probably would oh, yeah, be okay. friends in college. Although I'm probably a little bit older, and it would have been weird for a college student to be hanging out with a small child. But like, uh, oh, okay. You know. I have to say it would be weird, right? It's weird. Yeah, it is weird. yeah that's yeah. And so I'm, I'm feeling kind of weirded out just by the direction that this has gone. So right, anyways, gonna, anyways, take it back to some local. He's news. kind of a new cheerleader of the triangle tech scene, and so uh, right. Hey, that's great. Welcome, that thank us. you. So what? What do you want to talk about? There's local news. There's national news. There's 
there's crypto news, there's fintech news, Pendo, uh, some layoffs, dive plane raising a lot of money. Well, where do you want to start first? Well, Pete, let's we go just, local. Yeah, let's go local. That sounds good. Okay. Let's go local. Yeah, well, so am, Pendo. am I supposed to just throw yeah, I'll, out I'll everything? Start off. So, yeah, Pendo laid off 5% of its workforce, which I think is around 40. 40 employees. And that comes on the back of last year, they doubled their workforce to around a thousand. And, and they, for the last couple of years, have really been adding um, adding employees. So this came kind of as a surprise, no, Pete? I wasn't surprised. Some, Joe's not surprised. Joe, well, very few things surprised. No, but because they obviously have taken a lot of venture money. And I think when sort of the macro wins turn a bit, you know, as you mentioned, if you're taking a lot of venture money, then they're trying to throw in grow, grow, grow. And you're probably yeah. trying to grow some things where you haven't necessarily proven particular little paths. And then, you know, if the macro turns, if you're like, oh, I don't know, you probably can't do an IPO in the next 18 months or you wouldn't want to. And or and who knows if we're going to raise huge in the next year or two at the, at the an up round. And so maybe let's clip the wings of some of these new things and kind of retreat back to the things we've already proven out. Does that sound about a, what you're guessing? To me, that sounds exactly right. I mean, it, you know, when you raise a lot of venture and you go down that path is kind of an all gas, all brakes type of situation. No brakes. No brakes. Or you, well, you like don't want all gas it, and all brakes. That seems like well, a very well, poor way to drive. Kind of, it's, it's very dramatic, right? And so the right. highs are highs. And the oh, okay. Lows. I see. You actually and, did and, and so you that is game of it. And so I think Pendo is a great company and they're doing well. It's just the nature of how those things work. They come back from a board meeting and they're like, hey, you know, the next financing window is one that's not going to come as soon as we want or not the price we want. Um, it'd be better to maybe kind of cut back a little bit more on the more speculative things mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and focus on the core because it's not going to be easy money a year from now or 18 months from now. It's better to let that 18 month money drag up to two years or, or whatever. So I think it's smart. Um, it, it is, I mean, obviously it's never great to be kind of laid off from a company, no. but you know, Todd and crew, they have a very responsibility to build something really big and to do that, you know, you, you know, you have to make tough choices. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I think we'll see, more of that. We've already seen that with some very large companies. Um, yeah, the large seen... venture back policy genius and others. Yeah, of policy genius is the same, same story. Um, so Via, but that's actually a different story. They're just sort of. So here we go. So uh, I guess I'll read it since it's addressed yeah. to me. So, so uh, uh, Mike Shanahan is also commenting, Joe, curious on your thoughts, given the recent volatility and valuations coming down significantly recently, do you see this being a great opportunity for companies to be acquisitive? Thoughts on M&A landscape going forward. All right. Well, it's addressed to me, so I'll comment. It on. is addressed. Yeah. Apparently, Chantal and I, we're going to take a little break because I don't think Mike really, really wants to know what, what we, we have to stay but, on this But side. the short answer is yes and no. The, the problem <laughs> is large companies, they see it as an M&A opportunity yes. to go buy companies for cheaper. The problem is the companies they want to buy, which are the really good ones, aren't going for cheap. And the same thing happened. I know I experienced it at Bronto when it was 2008, 2009, right after the real estate bubble. Um, we got a number of offers and they, you know, people went hunting for more companies. But if you're doing well, you're like, why would I sell now? You know, you know, and so the companies that are looking to sell are more the companies that aren't doing well or a company that's acquisitive willing to pay a really high price, which not the transition in a weird way, but I will. Um, the company Figma, which is not based here, uh, just was purchased uh, by Adobe for $20 billion announced, I think, yesterday or something like that. And it's like kind of a visual design software tool. That's crazy. I think, Pete, didn't we figure it out? It was like 500 times. 50. No, times yeah, revenue. I'm sorry. 50. I'm sorry. 50 times revenue. Uh, I'm actually probably the higher than the company. Yeah. yeah. So deals are still happening. Um, well, just, here's the question. Like interest rates obviously have been going up. How are they getting high enough that they might have impact on private equity acquisition since they tend to use at least some debt? 
uh, yeah. or even a lot of debt. I, I think that's or a is there question. not really? Because they're still historically on the low or side. Yeah. So, uh, and mortgages so, just went over six percent. Yeah, I bought my house in '99, first house in '99, and I think it was seen was kind of average times for interest rates, and it was like eight. Right. And then only then around the Gulf War and all that started really creeping down to five, six. And it was just seen as incredible. And it just kept on staying low. So we've been kind of like in crazy low times anyways. Right. But back to your question. Um, so we get this question a lot at Jurassic, right? Because we're right. in the growth equity, private equity space. And we kind of essentially investing companies where the next tier are these larger growth equity companies that use a lot of debt. So- Right. Yes, it does. So there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines with in private equity, right? So these funds are very large. They've raised their capital. So in some ways, that can insulate a bit what we do at Jurassic and a lot of these acquisitions. That being said, they do often finance these transactions with venture debt. And venture debt is, like all debt, inherently based on an interest rate. And it's going to get more expensive. Mm -hmm. So it would make these deals more expensive to do, therefore maybe less likely to do. Um, so yeah, I, I do think it ripples through, not in direct and dramatic ways, but it does have an effect on it, without doubt. Would you say that the answer to most questions is yes and no? And I'd like that as a yes, yes and no <laughs> kind of answer. It depends. Depends. Right. <laughs> yeah, some, yeah, it does depend. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Uh, so. so what else, uh, do you want to talk plane? proof of stake? Oh, die plane. Okay. We'll, we'll stay local. Die yeah. plane is ascending, right? Yeah. So yeah, they're I mean, in they, uh, 25 million raised this week, which yes. brings their total funding. I think they launched in 2017. And I think that brings, it's an AI, AI startup, um, homegrown here in the triangle. And I think that brings their total funding to about 35 million. Were they in the, and, your unicorn series? They were in my unicorn okay, series. Okay, yeah. Yes, I have yes. Nothing but great memories <laughs> of your future unicorn, but they were all just Raleigh ones, right? Because you were getting some yeah, sweet, it, sweet it Innovate Raleigh money. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah it, was, it was in the triangle. We need but, to get I some mean, of that but, sweet, you know, sweet Innovate Raleigh money. Yeah, now. that's right. <laughs> but Dive Plane now is, I mean, on the flip side, Dive Plane is looking to expand hiring, you know, yeah, you know, I don't know if they're going to double its workforce, but they're definitely looking to set up an HQ, a bigger HQ. Oh, yeah. So in downtown Raleigh, they want to. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what exactly? I know they sort of their tagline is, you know, keep the hum humanity in AI. And as yeah. I tried to say, you can't spell humanity without AI. And I said, you can hard. have that. You can have that for free. Um, yeah. But what do you know exactly what, what that means in their in their context? Yeah. So in the simplest terms, um, they, One thing I can understand. Yeah. So simple. They, so they are an AI uh, platform and they create synthetic twin data. Sets. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, so companies anonymize it. I never know how to say that, but to, to kind of take out privately, personally identifiable information. Exactly. And, and this can be used, you know, across industries. And basically, you can share and companies can share and analyze data, but with that, while at the same time, uh, keep a person's privacy. Right. And, and keep their own sort of corporate, you know, they don't want to be giving away their own secrets and data. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that's, uh, yeah, obviously, that's a huge space, um, you know, sort of making data more secure, but still. So I imagine they're to... selling to very large companies and like governments yes. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah. So look, it, it's, it's great to see another triangle company. We'll see. Joe, Joe taking works off. out for, for Joe. Now, you know, I don't well, know who know, these people I, are putting into I mean, the $35 it, it million. Dollar, good, but you know. the, the problem <laughs> is like, it's always like the, what's behind that, right? Is that $25 million buying out previous investors? How much is of that right. is really going to the balance sheet? I mean, it, it is broadly good. Is it a down round? Do they need $25 million? Otherwise, they're going to have to shut their doors. Like, who knows, right? And so, but overall, those things tend to be good. But there's always a story behind the numbers that provides more that provides more detail, right? And that's often what, what I like to 
Like, right. So you feel there's like a, a deep, dark mystery behind. No, I don't think so. I think, I think bring with over all, with. Uh... No, I think with all, <laughs> okay. all investments, it's a depends. Yes. It's a yes and no situation. That's right? sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, comes back to that. It depends on that. Okay. So let's, uh, let's run a little ad sort of, uh, house ad as they say and then after that we're gonna we're gonna bring out our guests wait so i've never sure. seen oh yeah stand this back like, in the green room okay. all, i'm so Very excited because i i've never seen this ad and i don't <laughs> let's just do it yeah okay pete from Gretbeat here as awesome as the friday nooner is and that might be underselling it it's just one of many ways that we in Gretbeat try to fulfill our mission to lift the triangle tech community but we can't do it without your help. As a Grepbeat supporter, you'll get sweet perks like event discounts and newsletter shout outs. But the real reason to become a Grepbeat supporter is because you share our mission. So go to support.grepbeat.com today, please, and thank you. Now back to the show. Wow. Whoa. That, that, that has, was you know was that dynamic. A lot, lot of young women, like very young. Yeah, like I'm children, surprised. Really. I wouldn't have thought the demographic <laughs> of our supporters, which is a hundred dollars, you know, just to kind of get that out there. I didn't really, yeah, I didn't really lean into that. Uh, but that seems, you know, maybe she socked away a lot of money. She was like nine years old, but she <laughs> loves she loves the work we're doing for the I mean, Triangle Tech that. community. And I, I thought that video had it all. It had like pointing it had you in a very serious tone you had the pete nft i mean i there was more pete anything. paraphernalia that was kind of blocked by i mean we also had the bronto sign sort of in the back it, jackie was it, like let's do it in front of the bronto it's like you know i don't work for bronto you know unlike a lot of people here i've never worked for bronto so i didn't really i didn't feel like i wanted to put more gret beat branding well I think I think Jackie did um, a great job. Obviously, she can only it's like a sculpt. You can only do as good as the clay. So, you know, okay. whatever. You do as well as you can. But I thought it was good. Good job, Jackie. It was good. And, and of course, um, it is good to be a Greppy supporter. Yes. We are actually putting more things in place as the year um, finishes out that makes that a more compelling offering. So if you get in, right. uh, it will get better and better. Yes. Yes, we, we can't we can't do this without your help. As that per, as that gentleman said just moments ago. Uh, but let's bring out our guest Ryan Bethencourt. Uh, as mentioned, uh, among other things, the CEO of, of Wild Earth. He's the uh, managing partner would be the title of uh, Sustainable Food Ventures. But he can tell you much more about that himself. Hey everyone. Hey, Hello. hey, hey Ryan. Oh, pleasure Hello. to be with you. So was I was that accurate in my uh yeah, yeah, I think yeah, so. Okay. yeah. So so still the CEO of Wild Earth. Uh right. I'm a partner at Sustainable Food Ventures. Um and you know, I love all technology too. So I have a small right. uh small micro fund as well called Layer One, uh based here in the triangle as well that backs web three companies too. Oh great. Oh wow. And that's, but your background is more originally more as a, a scientist, right? Yeah, yeah. Sort of than biotech. So I, I actually worked for one of the big companies here. I worked for Quintiles, now called IQVIA. So I worked for them, um, started a biotech accelerator in San Francisco. I moved here to the Triangle about two years ago um, and continued building Wild Earth. So Wild Earth today is the leading plant-based um, healthy uh, pet food company. Um, and so, so it's, you know, it's, it's been kind of a mission for me to kind of, embrace the consumer side rather than just the science side. And then I've gotten interest. I've been interested uh, in technology for a long time. And obviously we are a tech company too. We're a direct to consumer company. There's a lot of tech in the back um, with how, how we operate too. So how did you get into pet food? I, I got obsessed. So I actually, so, so I'm plant-based myself and I was looking for products about five years ago. I was like, dogs are omnivores. Um, why aren't there more plant-based products? You know, I, I was plant based. I was like, I was looking for something like that for my pet um, and I didn't see it. So this was about five years ago. This was when Beyond Meat and Possible Foods and then Upside mm -hmm. Foods on the cell based side, the lab grown meat uh, stuff started to happen. And um, at the time I was I was running Indie Bio and I, I basically I decided to leave to start Wild Earth because I was like, this should exist. I want to build it. Um, and it's kind of been a mission to go from, OK, I've never worked in the pet space. How do we build you know better products in pet? Um, and I, I found so much broken in the pet food space. So um, the FDA has found euthanasia drug, you know, uh, in, in pet food is found in melted plastic, which we know causes cancer. Yeah. 
in pet food. And it's really, it, it's because of the strain that's gone on in the, in the supply chain. Uh, 25 to 30 percent of the meat we consume in the U.S. goes to our pets. You know, a lot of people don't know that. Oh, wow. Yeah, our pets eat a lot. Right. And and they don't need to, you know, they can have clean plant based protein. And so, um, you know, that was kind of a journey. Uh, I love it. My dog is she's nearly 14 lady. Uh, if, if you're around Durham, you'll see me walking her around. You know, I, I walk is, around. Is she a like, pit? Is she I think I, is she a pit? I think I saw no, a picture. She, she, she's I've, I've had pits before, but no, she, she's actually a German shepherd. OK, nice. she's, she's a German shepherd. So. Um, so, yeah. And so you know, a German shepherd or she just fed it. Is it vegan food as well, or oh, just more? It's 100 vegan. We're 100 vegan. So we have oh, a wow. few things. So we're vegan, sustainable. Does she act all high and mighty about being vegan. <laughs> yeah, she's really, she's con she's she's really condescending she's about a it. Smoothie with other dogs, and right? Other dogs, like, what is that? Is that a bacon strip? I mean, come on. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> about the environment. Although I have to, by the way, I have to watch out. Some pre, some reason she's able, always able to find like chicken bones, you know, from chi chicken wings. Like she, she, she has oh, yeah. a sixth sense. So, so I usually yeah. have to pull it out of her mouth when she finds it. So, but yeah, we were going on walks and things. But yeah, so, so I think probably the most interesting thing for for you know your viewers that are not familiar. So I, I love Grep Beat, love the tech community, and, and I think that one of the things that what we found, particularly with Wild Earth, and, and we have a large uh, group of team members here here in the Triangle. We are remote and distributed, but I'm here, and so is our COO and some of our team, about half of our team is here. Um, one of the most surprising things when I talk to people in the Triangle about Wild Earth um, is like, they're like plant-based dog food. Wait, dogs are carnivores? They're not, they're omnivores. And actually one of the more interesting things are two publications that just came out this year by Professor Dodd and Professor Knight uh, that showed that dogs on plant-based diets uh, had fewer serious illnesses, fewer vet visits, so saves money, um, and actually lived a year and a half longer than than dogs on conventional meat-based kibble diets. So that was kind of mind blowing. Um, that that that's went like kind of viral. One and a half years. Yeah, one and a half years. That I mean, that's a long that's time. A lot. Uh, a year. No, that's, yeah, that's yeah. Half, in in human years. That's like yeah, eleven. That's, yeah, yeah, my brother that, and I just this weekend was trying to do the like. So how does it break down? He was like, Yeah, no, there's no one to seven. Just stop. I'm like okay, all right. Yeah, it's it's know. really tricky. I've tried to figure it out. Like what, what, in dog years, and it's like it kind of everyone has their own. You know, it's is it seven years? It's, 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 it's a little on the breed, like, like whether they're relative to their expected thing, where they're in middle age. But yeah, the like the conversion to human years is not a. I'm sticking with seven. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, it seven roughly works. It roughly it doesn't works. matter. You give him new information, but it doesn't really kind of penetrate the like he, he's going to stick. No. I guess like with what I know about sustainable food ventures. That's something you yeah. started in the triangle, yeah, right? In the triangle. Yeah. Yeah. So, so one of, one of the challenges, and I think for a lot of entrepreneurs who want to build like better food businesses, one of the challenges, is where do you even start? And so um, th that was kind of an idea that, that I had. And I started with Marilis Holm, who's, who's my partner uh, and my wife, uh, but also my partner at sustainable food ventures. She's a food scientist. Um, and it was like, well, I want to help other entrepreneurs that are trying to make better foods, better products, better, you know, really stuff for the, the conscious consumer. Um, and I had this idea. I was like, why don't I go to AngelList? And so I hit up AngelList and I was like, I would I would love to start a rolling fund. So it's a it's a it's a, it's a rolling fund, sustainable food ventures. We have lots of investors, some in the triangle, uh, some really globally who back us. And in the last two years since we started uh, we started right as we moved to the triangle. We've backed 50 uh, future food companies. Uh, several of them, I think about five of them are actually in the triangle itself. So companies like Gelatech, um, Dinesh with uh, at the incredible eats, you know, the, the edible spoons and things. So he was also oh, another, yeah. he was on Shark Tank too. Um, and, 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 and several others that are actually in the triangle. And so uh, Perlita Foods, so the plant-based oyster company. So we, we've, been, we've been able to help a lot of founders get off the ground. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's been a lot of fun and it's usually the first check. So about 50% of the time we'll write a 50 to hundred K first check for founders that just want to get off the ground and they really get our, our help and our expertise. Marilis is full time on this. I basically, I'm more like the bat phone. I'm kind of like when things are on fire, you call me. Otherwise I've got other things to do, including running wild earth. Um, but it's, it's been really great. We've been able to help a lot of companies get off the ground. So we're able to back like the first plant-based meat company in Nigeria and Lagos, uh, one of the, you know, like it's just really, you know, uh, just, just very broad and global. And so, so it's, it's been, it's been really great being able to do that and having it based here in the triangle and being able to back local entrepreneurs here. 
So why did you relocate from Berkeley to the Triangle? Yeah, I mean, great question. So, um, you know, uh, it was actually, so we actually had one team member already based here in the Triangle and, and actually North Carolina, not quite in the Triangle, by the beaches. And, um, and when, when the pandemic hit, California closed down. So it was just everything was closed in California. We got forced to work from home. I lived five minutes walk from our offices in Berkeley. Um, and what I realized was actually we could we could operate remotely pretty well. And and I started to think about it. And I was like, we, we'd had a lot of problems recruiting, uh, recruiting people. I mean, we're you know, we're a plant based dog food company. We're mission motivated. We're starting Berkeley. But, um, you know, we were competing with Google and Facebook and, you know, and all these biotech companies as well. And and I just had this idea. I was like, why don't. You know, I, I'd been to, to the Triangle before. I loved it. I thought it was phenomenal. It was always on my mind as one of the leading biotech and tech hubs. I, I think very much so. I think now even more so. You know, we're seeing tech really accelerate in the Triangle. But I, I thought of it from a biotech perspective. And I'd worked for Quintiles, IQVIA before. Um, and so I was like, you know what? Why don't we go? And so I brought Marillus. We came to the Triangle. We kind of explored it. We tried hiring remotely. We found, I mean, incredible talent, like talent that we just could not hire in California that were super excited to work for a mission driven company. Um, and so over time, we just started to hire more and more people. And I just I just moved. I was like, OK, we're moving. We're starting up second headquarters based in the triangle. Um, and since then, we've we've been able to, to really just hire an incredible, incredibly talented team. We have embraced remote work. So some of our team members have moved around a little bit. Um, and so we now have team members in like Boston and New York, uh, in the Triangle, in the Bay Area, in Los Angeles, actually in Florida, too. Um, but our vision is actually to continue to scale in the Triangle. And so for Wild Earth, I'm actually at an undisclosed location. It's not Wild Earth headquarters right now. Uh, we're talking oh. to a local partner that we got connected to by NC Biotech. Um, and we're talking about scaling up uh, sustainable foods in general, really. And so manufacturing it here in the Triangle um, creating new products here in the triangle together. And so it, the triangle we, was, we were brought here by the agricultural side and the tech side and the biotech side. And I think the triangle is about to become a consumer hub as well. Hmm. What, what are some of the consumer uh, ones that you're sort of seeing or hearing about that, that make you say that? I, I, I'm starting to see. So actually on the web three front, I'm starting to see some web three companies um, popping up. Um, there, there's actually Thunder Shirts is based here. So that's the, the oh, dog, yeah. you know, the, the, so, so they're, 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 they're a handful. There's, um, uh, there's a toy company here as well. There's a, a consumer toy company. There's furn yeah, there we go. That's, that's the one. There's a furniture company as well. And the, the, you know, the, the, they're kind of sporadic. And yeah, so right. one of the ideas that I've had is how do we kind of pull all these consumer companies together and start talking? Um, recently, another company just moved here called Alginet. Um, and Alginet is actually, uh, uh, they're backed by a large Hong Kong investor called Horizons. They were based in Brooklyn. Uh, they wanted the expertise with textiles development that North Carolina has. Mm. And they just set up shop here in the Triangle. Um, and they're going to be making sustainable uh, biomaterials. So they're using algae uh, as an alternative to plastics to make things like shoes and clothing and various other things. And so I think we're going to start to see really sustainable materials, sustainable foods, and other consumer goods products really popping up across the triangle. In addition to obviously Apple setting up their East Coast headquarters and Google scaling up and who knows what Facebook is doing, you know. So in addition to all of that, um, we're going to see that. And then for me, I love biotech. I know Grep Beats mostly doesn't cover biotech, but. Um, yeah, Joe gets very, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah it, but. The sensitive but, subject. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's a really interesting hub for biotech too. I mean, it yeah, is a no. cell therapy hub. We're going to be set. We're already seeing manufacturing of organs here in the triangle, which oh. is amazing. So United, I know that really cool. yeah, United Therapeutics is doing that. So they're they're actually manufacturing organs here in the triangle. If you drive past them in RTP, it's it's this company with these big lung statues in the front. So right as you drive past them, they have just these big lung statues. They're making lungs. They're making kidneys. Oh, they're making I can start smoking again. No, yeah, well, yeah, you could. You could. Just take a little risk, throwing dice, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> By the way, when, when are we going to legalize? We, should, we definitely need to legalize all the things, right? So here in the time. Well, okay. It's not yeah. just legal. <laughs> right. it's it's part, let's like open it up a little bit more, you know? A little, just, not just CBD, but everything else, right? All the other medical use cases. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is a hot topic, so... Yeah. What about so the Web3? You mentioned you have sort of a new micro fund. Yeah. Uh, what, what is it that's attracting you there? Can, and can you explain what the proof of stake versus uh, proof of work? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. This so, is a- so we are just, so Pete and I, right before the Friday dinner, we are watching, we are talking about this. And my, our basic conclusion is I just know it's not proof. I know what proof of work yeah, is. Know I know it's, it's not that. We yeah, watched, we watched a two minute video, video, which kind of, that helps them. So, 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 bottom line, it's just, it's a, so, so for those that are not following what's going on with the Web3 world, so um, we actually do have uh, actually multiple Web3 meetups in the triangle. So, there's now a Monday Web3 meetup in RTP. In American Underground, we have every other Thursday, we have a meeting, uh, mm-hmm. the triangle Web3 meetup as well. Um, so, so we, we, you know, there is, there is an ecosystem, emerging ecosystem here. Uh, it's a mixture of primarily people that are focused on the Ethereum ecosystem, but there is an emerging, uh, group focusing on Solana and a couple of other chains. Unfortunately, there was a brief period where Luna was also represented, but now not so much. Yeah, uh, Luna. That all fell apart. Yeah, Not that sure. all that that was unfortunately a mess. Uh, but uh, yeah, so 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 um, you know, proof of work and proof of stake. Really, for those of us that care about the environment, um, you know, it, it's a it's a tremendous shift for Ethereum. And so, you know, uh, I would say, it, you know, the people who who are Ethereum investors who are basically ETH maxis are also kind of solar punks. You know, really believe in a better future. You know, they talk about green pilling themselves. And so, finally, Ethereum has been able to move from proof of work, which is what Bitcoin uses, um, which is which is not very sustainable. It's very secure. Uh, but it's not very sustainable and really being able to move over to proof of stake, which is, I think, about 99 percent more energy efficient for transactions, which I mean, is. I think when they switched, it basically was all the energy consumption of Portugal or something. Crazy no, that's like that. OK. That, yeah, I, I believe it. I believe it. It was a massive because people use ETH. Right. So whereas whereas people buy, like buy Bitcoin as store of value, I don't know if the narrative of digital gold holds up anymore, maybe. Um, but but um, people use yeah. Ethereum and they use fact, Solana. In fact, um, this uh, this is not the NFT of the T, <laughs> but I believe if uh, the NFT ownership is done on the blockchain network through OpenSea. But uh, it was, as it was, we as we discovered, so it was, anyway, minted. it was minted. Yeah, and you, yeah. Can, you can have PO apps. You can have PO apps for every for every grep beats. You know, event you can have a POAP too, right? So we don't even know about that. Yeah, know. You have to go to these. <laughs> it's like a little <laughs> it's, a collectible <laughs> NFT, man. it's a collectible NFT. It's like I was there, right? So, so oh, okay. and, I think, I think, I think we're starting to see a real emergence of the Web3 ecosystem. So we have locals in North Carolina. There's actually like a blockchain association, and there's like lobbying going on in in North Carolina. And then we also have people coming in from New York, from San Francisco, from Los Angeles. Who are you know? We've seen the you know the massive migration statistics right into North Carolina into the Triangle, um, and, and these people are you know are are people from those native ecosystems that have experience in Web three. You know we have a fair number of uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum OGs uh, that actually live here. We actually also have some Solana OGs. The first Solana NFT that was minted it was called Creatures. Uh, and they're based in Kerry. The, the founders are actually based in Kerry. So okay. it was actually the first Solana NFT was minted by a company here in Kerry in the so triangle. What is, how would you sort of define Web3? It's a great for- question. So um, so, so I, that it has many, many definitions. Right. For me, Web3, what really captured me was the ability to, to move value and culture onto the blockchain, right? Like to me, the, the, the idea of, um, you know, being able to, to actually have uh, an internet where transactions can be local or native to that without without additional charges. So, you know, when you when you think right. about paying right? yeah, like a third party, a third party let's say you use your visa or whatever, your, your Amex, you know, they take 2.5, 3 percent of that transaction. They charge that to the retailer. You, you really don't have those costs. So if you have something like a Solana pay, um, which uses USDC, the transaction costs are like, point zero 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 one cent or something like that i mean it's very very low for those of us in the western world it's kind of like yeah it's a convenient thing it's it's kind of cool but if you're in you know i actually had some friends visiting from argentina recently here in the triangle 
you know, they have nearly 100% inflation year on year. And, and actually the on-ramps to get out of the Argentinian peso is actually they're blocked. And so for them to be able to be in USDC and not have the horrendous inflation that they have. USDC meaning the US dollar. That yeah, means. US dollar. It's, a, it's what's called a stable coin. So it right. basically, it reflects one-on-one. -on -one, it reflects a US dollar. So the value is, it, it's not going to go up, you know, up into the right. It's going to stay wherever the value of the dollar is. You know, I think the, the value for the world of Web3 and being able to have access to, um, you know, to independent money, right? Whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's Ethereum, whether it's Solana is incredibly valuable. And when you talk to people in these ecosystems, we are very privileged to live in the US where we only have, what is it, 8.1% inflation. There are countries in this world where, you know, the governments are corrupt and they just print money like crazy and, and, and people have no way out. And so yeah. for me, crypto and Web3 is a way for people to get to opt out of corrupt regimes and corrupt governments that corrupt the money supply itself by creating inflation. They print more money and then your money is worth, you know, 80% less that year if you don't spend it. Um, and, then, and then some of the more interesting applications in Web3 are when you start connecting value to, to uh, transactions with, within the web, you can get away from things like advertising. If, some, if, if the transaction is, the microtransactions are built into the web, it's like really, really fascinating. So I, I actually had this for Wild Earth. I was like, why can't we accept Solana? Why can't we accept Ethereum? Why can't we accept Bitcoin? And it's because the infrastructure had not really been built. Now we do, by the way, we've actually, people have bought Wild Earth with like Bitcoin and ETH and Sol and Doge, you know, uh, you know uh, various different chains. Um, but, you know, we've got to experiment. And, and to me, um, I think that there's incredible value that's going to be unlocked for, you know, what, what, what connecting... Uh, currency and culture and decentralized finance and all these things, I think we're going to be exploring and figuring that out all out together, um, you know, as as Web3 starts to build up. By the way, buyer beware, be super careful whenever you're, you're in the crypto space. It is the Wild West. Think of it like a frontier. Um, you know, if you're in the Wild West, there's a lot of opportunity, but there's a lot of danger, too. And so we're still in that that era where there's a lot of risk. Um, but there are a lot of people here in the triangle that are very excited about it and actually have a lot of experience, far more than I do. You know, they were around in the very, very early days uh, and were buying Bitcoin and buying Ethereum and, and, and various other things. And so I, I'm a little bit more of a Solana maxi, but I like ETH too. Um, a Bitcoin, I have no use for. Um, so I know it's great, but I have no use for it. I like to do Well, you'll Bitcoin. be happy to know that if you want to become a Grubbeat supporter, uh, we're just doing it in US which dollars. I do, which I do, which I do. Yes, <laughs> this credit card, and we probably are charging two or three percent. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll have to figure out how to run that on crypto rails, right? Lower, lower, it. lower costs, lower costs. We're, we'll work on it slowly yes. but surely. Yeah. All right. So I feel like I need to go back and do some research just to uh, understand some of the things you said. But uh, I, I appreciate it. Uh, very much it you coming on and uh, and taking the time. Yeah, and see, and see you at the, the next Grepbeat events. Love the events, you know, and uh, and by the way, love love everything that you're all doing to build the ecosystem out. I am convinced, you know, I moved here from Silicon Valley. I'm convinced that the triangle is going to be its own thing, but a really interesting thing that melds technology, biotechnology, and I think consumer as well and sustainable products. Well, I'm going to like run through a wall over here. I'm very, very <laughs> I'm excited. We're, we're bringing it. By the way, I heard earlier today, I can't say who, but... There's a cell-based meat company that's going to be manufacturing lab-grown meat, uh, oh. not in the triangle, but a little bit outside of the triangle. And Ooh. later on today, I'm going to talk about other initiatives to bring like these future food products, both fermented food products and other cell-based meat products. Lady, it's, like a cliff, it's a cliffhanger. Yeah, so manufactured <laughs> here, manufactured here in the triangle, in the greater triangle. So I come in, tune in next week and we'll see. Yeah. What <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jackie, why don't you play the outro? She's there somewhere. Bye, guys. Right. Thank, thank you.